The first weekend in November was always a big weekend for me growing up. Now he talks about the Red Hurricane. I'm from Butler, we're the Golden Tornado. And we would always spend that first Friday in November playing each other. And it was always uh, one of those events that you just say, this is the best time of my life. I'll never be able to duplicate it. Uh, we were really influenced by two incredible people. Lindy Laurel at Newcastle, Art Bernardi at Butler. While they were great football coaches, they were great tutors. They were great men. They were great examples of who you should be. And I think that whenever we were growing up, and it's so much different for you all, the world you've grown up in is entirely different than the world we grew up in. You have so many more pressures on you than we had. You know, the biggest thing in my life growing up, and if, if Coach Bernardi caught you doing two things, smoking or drinking, you were no longer going to be a member of the football team. So smoking and drinking were the big things, but it was about people drinking something with something called Colt 45. It was some kind of a beer. Uh, and we thought that was a big deal if you could do something like that. For those of you that are a little bit older, you look at it and say, oh my gosh, you know what? Those were such great days, so much easier for you guys, for you guys. And I'm going to tell you now, as a parent of five, a grandfather of 10, in my own family, my son is a heroin addict. He started when he was 14 years old. He is 42 now. We have been through so many different uh, things. Uh, one, one place, another place, a place after, a place after. We've spent all these years trying to get it. My son gets so exasperated with me. He says, Dad, you don't know what it's like to be an addict. And I said, I don't. And you're one of the things I love most in my life, and you don't know what it's like to be an addict's father. You don't know what it's like to be an addict's mother. You don't know about the sleepless nights when you don't hear from somebody, when you worry about where are they. I hope he or she is safe. I hope there's some place where nobody can harm them. And with my son, it started with an innocent, association with somebody else and sometimes your best friend can be your worst enemy. I would just ask all of you because you're at this point in your life where you can make a decision based on whether I go to the right or I go to the left, whether I do the right thing or whether I do the wrong thing, whether I stay disciplined and understand exactly what this could have on the rest of my life or whether I just cast my fate to the wind and say things always work out. People tell me all the time, don't worry, don't worry, Kelly, things will work out. This is the one thing I know for sure. Things will never work out if they're left to their own. The responsibility you all have right now is not as my son or my daughter, but as this next generation. You have things in your life that we never faced. You have people approaching you with things that we were never approached with. You know, you're described as 25% of our population. Do you know that? Youth in America, 25% in our population. Do you know the real key to it? You're 100% of our future. It's going to be on your shoulders. It's going to be on your backs. It's going to tap and on your time to make sure that you do something with this generation that carries us on to the next generation that we become stronger, that we become more understanding, that we become more aware of the dangers that life offers today. You're being attacked from all different sides with all different types of products. The question is, how strong do you stay? How educated do you get? When I talked to Ange a couple weeks ago, we talked about what happened in my family, and he talked about, I think I have something that may help. I think I have something that may help. I would just ask all of you to look around at each other and understand that the time you have together now is the most precious time you ever have in your life. Once you graduate and then go out into the world, some of you may never see each other again. But the fact is, every one of you will have some value in the future that you can't realize right now, but you will fulfill that. Look, I said earlier, you face challenges we never faced. You face products that I can't even pronounce. There's drugs being pushed into our communities. 
from people who only do it for one reason. It's not because they love you. They want to profit off you. They will gladly destroy your future for their own profit. Look, as a grandfather, <clears throat> I worry about my grandchildren every day. As a father, I worry about my own children every day. But as a member of this community, and we're all in the same community, we need to worry about each other. I would just ask that somehow today, try to absorb what's being said to you. Try to understand why the concern for you. Try to get it. Try to understand that you are our future. We have an obligation to educate you. We have an obligation to get you ready for life. You also have an obligation and a responsibility to carry that flame forward. So, Ange, thank you so much for being here today. I gotta tell you, I look out there and I can see some of your eyes. I can see some of you looking up and saying, you know what, you know what? I accept that challenge. I'll take that challenge. I will be the most positive part of this community I can be. I will be disciplined when others want me to be somewhat different. And I will understand that my life, my life, is the one life I can have the greatest influence on. Listen, God bless you all. Let's all learn today. Let's all move forward from this. Let's get stronger. Ange, thank you. And we beat, we beat Butler last, back when he was my age, okay?